all. Mr. President. Yes. Senator from South Dakota. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent the quorum call be dispensed with. Without objection. Mr. President, we've begun the new year in the 114th Congress with a Republican majority and a fresh commitment to get Congress working again. Overwhelmingly, Americans supported the pro-growth ideas of the Republican Party at the polls in the November election, sending a strong message about their frustration with the gridlock that we've experienced in the Democrat-led Senate. And so, Mr. President, it's time to get to work, time to return to regular order and to openly debate legislation, to move bills through committee, to allow for members on both sides of the aisle to offer amendments, and to get the Senate back on track passing bills the way it should be. The American people deserve a Senate that works, and the new Republican majority intends to deliver. And that's why it is so disappointing that President Obama would threaten to veto the very first bill Republicans plan to bring to the Senate floor for a vote, a bipartisan bill to authorize the Keystone XL pipeline, a bill that was introduced, introduced here in the Senate, Mr. President, with 60 co-sponsors. Mr. President, the Keystone XL pipeline enjoys widespread public support, and that's not surprising. Poll after poll has demonstrated that the American people are concerned about jobs and the economy, and they want to get the country working again and to strengthen our energy independence. The Keystone XL pipeline will help do just that. And yet President Obama would rather hold the economy hostage to the far left wing of his party than put American workers first. His war on energy runs counter to what this country needs, jobs and the affordable energy that will support them. Mr. President, I've shared time and time again here on the Senate floor what President Obama's own State Department has said about the project. The State Department has concluded that the pipeline will not only support 42,000 jobs during construction, but that it will do so without significant impact on the environment. And, I might add, without spending a cent of taxpayer money. The Keystone XL pipeline has been stuck in limbo for over six years and has become more than just an energy issue. In my home state of South Dakota, rail backlogs caused tremendous delays for farmers trying to get their harvest to market. The Keystone XL pipeline would help alleviate this backlog by taking 100,000 barrels of Montana and North Dakota oil off the rails, freeing up nearly two unit trains per day of capacity that is sorely needed by other rail shippers. This pipeline will also bring useful tax revenue to South Dakota. The State Department estimates that in my home state of South Dakota alone, construction of the pipeline, pipeline will support 3,000 to 4,000 jobs during construction and generate well over $100 million in earnings. It will also bring over $20 million in annual, pro annual property taxes to South Dakota counties. Places like Jones County, where I grew up, could benefit greatly from having this added tax revenue for their schools. The Keystone XL pipeline will also decrease our reliance on oil from dangerous countries like Venezuela. And yet, President Obama and some Democrats continue to downplay all of these benefits. They say the jobs are mostly temporary. Well, Mr. President, construction jobs are temporary by nature, but that doesn't mean they don't matter. Rather, it means we need to keep new projects like Keystone XL coming to spur growth and to develop new infrastructure. By shutting down what would be a routine energy infrastructure project, President Obama is creating a difficult environment for future development and projects. The far left wing of the President's party claims the pipeline will increase greenhouse gases. But reports from the President's own State Department undermine this claim. In its final supplemental environmental impact statement, the State Department, the President's State Department noted that the Keystone XL pipeline is, and I quote, unlikely to significantly impact the rate of extraction in the oil sands or the continued demand for heavy crude oil at refineries in the United States, end quote. In other words, the emissions associated with the oil sand extractions will not change whether or not the pipeline is built. And while oil prices may impact the production rate of oil sands, the State Department also found that, and I quote again, the dominant drivers of oil sands development are more global than any single infrastructure project, end quote. And they went on to say, and I quote again, the industry's rate of expansion should not be conflated with the more limited effects 
of individual pipelines, end quote. And mind you, Mr. President, this is again from one of the five exhaustive reports that we've seen from the State Department about this project. In fact, the State Department's final environmental impact statement also compared the operational greenhouse emissions that would result from the pipeline to those that would result from various transportation alternatives such as rail, rail and pipeline, and rail and tanker. The report found that the annual emissions from these alternative transportation modes would be anywhere from 28% to 42% greater than if the oil were shipped through the pipeline. Plus, a pipeline is safer than truck or rail. Mr. President, the American people have been clear on their feelings about this project. Poll after poll has shown their strong support. Republicans support the pipeline. Democrats in both houses of Congress support the pipeline. Unions support the pipeline. The only people who seem to oppose it are President Obama and members of the far left wing of the Democrat Party. After the Senate passes the bill, it will have one final hurdle to clear, the President of the United States. I very much hope that he will reconsider his veto threat and listen to the voices of American workers and to bipartisan majorities in Congress. If the pipeline's economic benefits, the support of the American people, and five successful environmental reviews haven't yet convinced the President to approve this project, I'm pretty skeptical that he ever will. But Mr. President, I hope that I'm wrong. And I hope that even more Democrats here in the Senate will join us and send a message about their readiness to work with Republicans in this 114th Congress. My colleagues can help show the American people that Congress has heard their demands for change in Washington and that their economic priorities will be addressed. Mr. President, I'm sorry that American workers have had to wait years for this project, but I'm hopeful that we can resolve this issue once and for all. The new Republican Senate majority is about creating jobs and economic opportunities for the American people, and it starts right here, right now, with the Keystone XL pipeline. We hope Democrats and the President and the President will join us. Mr. President, I yield the floor.